This episode of The Young Turks is brought to you by Jack Threads. Roger Lowenstein has written uh, one of the worst articles in American history. Uh, it was for New York Times Magazine. It was a profile on Jamie Dimon, the head of J.P. Morgan Chase and Company. Uh, they, he calls him America's least hated banker and goes on to um, do him uh, services. Okay? Uh, he says uh, Jamie Dimon is brilliant and risk averse, etc. Funny thing is, he mentions in the first uh, page uh, this little thing that he just completely ignores for the rest of the article. Uh, over the last two years, J.P. Morgan Chase suffered an astonishing $51 billion in faulty mortgages, unpaid credit cards, and other bad loans. But look away, because I'm about to tell you how awesome Jamie Dimon is. But wait a minute, why don't you spend another sentence or two explaining how he screwed that up so incredibly badly? No. Nope. It's over. Now, uh, I want to give you a sense. It's 19 pages when you print it out, so of course I'm not going to give you the whole thing, but I will give you an excellent sense of what's in the article. Let's go to quote number one. This is very typical. This is on nearly every single one of the printed pages, uh, this kind of praise for Jamie Dime. Uh, remember, J.P. Morgan Chase, one of the companies that crashed our economy and uh, nearly c c caused a global economic depression. We theoretically res rescued it and only had the Great Recession. So what does he say about Jamie Dime? At 54, Diamond remains trim, and though his hair is salt and peppery, there's something boyish, a puckish, faintly suppressed grin in his manner. He speaks hurriedly, almost garbling the words, clutching a coffee cup while jabbing the air with his free hand. Colleagues marvel at his accessibility and his seemingly perfect recall. You go in the office, and there's almost nothing on his desk, says Steve Black, a longtime colleague. He reads it and remembers. Wow. He is so beautiful. He is one of the most beautiful men I've ever met and perfect recall. Or it could be that the interpretation of his empty desk is he doesn't have much work. But of course not. No, Jamie Dimon is a god and he must be praised as such because we don't do journalism in this country anymore. Instead we do, I'm trying to remain calm, <laughs> we do things that I would not call journalism. Okay? Incredible restraint there. Quote number two. Diamond's mantra is, do the right thing. That might sound like a co corporate bromide, but it informs his view on how to run the company. From dealing with problems directly trying to make gay employees at his firm feel comfortable, Diamond seems incapable of stifling unpleasant news. This translates at a corporate level to a rare emphasis on transparency. Openness also works as sort of a spiritual glue. Mike Cavanaugh, who worked for Diamond in the early 90s, jumps him for Citigroup to, uh, to join him at Bank One and today runs a J.P. Morgan business that caters to institutional client, says that Diamond can't help but tell the truth. <laughs> oh God, oh these, this is, this is crap. This is crap of the highest order. Okay, now let's get to the substance, right? It, he goes on and on for 19 pages with this drivel about how awesome Jamie Diamond is. In, in one great scenario, he gets fired. But instead of talking about why he got fired, Roger Lowenstein explains that it was actually a brilliant move on his part. And that on his way out of the building, uh, somebody, uh, he had an epiphany. And he told somebody, you know what? Uh, I'm never going to work for anyone else again. Yeah, everybody would like to have that epiphany. Here, I had an epiphany. I'm going to make a million dollars. Okay, but we don't all get to have that privilege because we're not all incredibly rich bankers who are going to get hired for the next job and not have to work for anybody, okay? It's not an epiphany. Anyway, so to the uh, heart of the issue. Listen to this telling paragraph. When Diamond arrived at J.P. Morgan, Bill Winters, the co-head of the investment bank, had heard that Diamond viewed derivatives trading as excessively risky. Winters confronted him, and Diamond responded that he didn't understand derivatives well enough to have an opinion. Winters took him to school. Uh, it got quite detailed, long dated currency options and so on. Winters recalled, quote, he was the only CEO I ever worked for who did that. Now that is telling in two huge ways. The head of JP Morgan Chase had no idea what derivatives were. Derivatives are what caused the financial collapse. That's stunning, okay? But this is turned around to praise of Jamie Dimon because as the CEO of what is now a $2 trillion company, he bothered to ask, hey, what is this incredibly risky products we're dealing with? 
in enormous leverage that could not only destroy our company, but the entire economy. He bothered to ask. And for that, he is praised. And the other executive says, none of the other CEOs have ever asked. Now, if that doesn't scare the hell out of you, I mean, as soon as I read that, I was like, oh, another crash is <laughs> inevitable. I already thought that, but this only confirmed it further. Now, so it gives you a sense of what utter incompetence and foolishness is at the top of these banks. Do you know why they don't care? You know why they never ask? Because they don't want to ask. Because they're making a lot of money in the short term for themselves. Do you know that, he, and then at the end of the article, he finally mentions this, uh, the, a writer does, that Jamie Dimon hasn't made a nickel for his shareholders? that since 2004, and it's a bit of an exaggeration, but I'll tell you the exact number, and since 2004, their uh, stock price is flat. So if you're a shareholder of J.P. Morgan, it's not like Jamie Dimon was brilliant for you. No, you got nothing out of it. But Jamie Dimon got a lot of money out of it. He made $16 million last year, and that's the tip of the iceberg. That's just last year, okay? So all the executives made a ton of money. Why do you think they don't want to know what the derivatives are? Because those things are set to explode, but they make tremendous bank off of them today, and they explode on your head tomorrow. Now, to get a sense of how incredibly disingenuous Jamie Dimon is, we go to the final quote. Dimon's reputation for averting risk suffered a hit. Uh, oddly, oddly, I love that, the executive who, who worried about 100-year storms failed to challenge the industry models on home defaults. Many banks, including Chase, issued a stated income loans on which applicants were not required to document their income. Some mortgage brokers clearly encouraged borrowers to lie. Diamond says he thought Chase had enough information electronically to police such loans. He says, quote, we didn't anticipate the lying. And Lowenstein reports this as if with no incredulity. He said, like, oh yeah, okay, he didn't anticipate the lying. You know what the nickname of those loans were in the industry? Liar loans. They called them liar loans. Because they knew if you don't ask somebody for documentation and they, you say to them, how much money would you like? They're going to lie to you. Because you're encouraging the lie. Hey, would any regular human being, would you, somebody came up to you and said, hey, uh, I'd like to borrow $100,000, but I don't want to show you any documentation, just trust me. Would any of you do it? Would any of you be, uh, it, not anticipate the lying? <laughs> I mean, you get a sense of how disingenuous this is? Of course he knew they were lying. They were called liar loans. <laughs> so Jamie Dimon, who was heralded as a guy who was averse to risk, built this gigantic bank and all of these uh, trades and derivatives, etc., on these liar loans, and he says, oh, well, golly gee willikers, that was my one mistake, and I couldn't have seen it coming. My ass you couldn't see it coming. You saw it coming and you got so damn rich off of it. And Roger Lowenstein being the worst reporter in the country apparently couldn't figure that out. He's like, oh, Jamie Dimon, he salt and peppery hair and trim and beautiful at 54. And he could, oh, the one thing is he couldn't see the, the biggest crash of our lifetimes partly caused by his company. But ignore that, he's so brilliant. He's such a great banker. And throughout the article, he explains how Obama was so tough on the bankers, and he feels abused by Obama and the Democrats. And he thinks, what, why are you blaming the bankers? Well, because you caused the collapse, and apparently you're going to cause the next one. Jack Threads is a new sponsor for TYT. They're a members-only online shopping club. But because you know us, you're going to get in. Aren't we cool? <laughs> but here's a key part to it, 80% off. Hello, up to 80% off of the, some of the top apparel lines in the country game over. Right. So go to jackthreads.com slash TYT because it's free to join and you get all those discounts and you avoid the pain in the ass. The ending of this commercial is a little schwang right away. <laughs>